in a creek area. I'm hoping that my voice is going to turn out well. Welcome to Bodhisattva YouTube, where we form a golden embryo of energy, a golden embryo of collective focus. And this focus is to create an area, an era of peace, an age of peace, the next golden age of peace. So welcome. First thing I want to assure you today is remote distance connection. And so I'm inviting you all to tune in with me in this area that the sky and earth and water, this dimension of planet earth has provided for me today to speak with you. So I'm inviting you all to connect with me on a heart level our mind and heart, our bodies, oscillation from wherever you are on this planet to connect with me here and now. Welcome. So, I'm here to tell a good story today. I'm here to live well as a human being and to speak from my heart and to share with you, to share a good story. So I'll start by saying that I've been to this river many, many times in the past 20 years. It is a very special place for me. This is a This is a glacial river. Yes, this is a glacial river. This is known as the Glacier Kokanee National Park up higher in the mountains and down close to the arm of the Kootenai Lake that leads down towards Nelson. We're on the North Shore. It's called Kokanee Creek Park. And they're both protected areas in British Columbia, Canada. They're both national park areas. And that is where I am today. And I'm here to tell a story about a keystone species. A keystone species on our planet that we are meant to live in right relationship with. A species that cellular memory, its migrational memory is as old as the earth itself and how the earth has formed itself. So they connect with these rivers, these animals, these, these fish, they connect with these rivers and these lakes and the ocean from the time they have begun. That from the from the time their species has begun within within the ocean and their memory with the earth and how it's formed itself naturally goes all the way back from its beginning to now and that's incredible and I think that teaches us a lot about who we are as a species so there I'm in love with the salmon, my heart is with all the fish of the world at this time upon our planet. And I came up here today because in the last 20 years, the fisheries have been working with the landlocked salmon and these rivers that lead to these mountain lakes where the landlocked salmon exist and reach all the way up the mountains into the glaciers. And I came here honestly today planning on doing a video to discuss what I was concerned about. And that's my good story today. How time passes with the people you live with and the communities that surround you and how time changes us all. Because I came up here today thinking that it was just the way it was going to be, the way it was 
four years ago and then I found out that it wasn't even the way I thought it was four years ago, four years ago. So people have been listening to each other and each other's concerns about these species. And we're doing a good job here. I still have concerns about some of the um, biological perspectives that I'm going to continue to learn and talk about with the lake and uh, the, what we add, the soil we add to the lake and perhaps the crayfish, but I'm open-minded, open-hearted and willing to hear the scientists, the fisheries, points of view and why they do it and the pros and cons. But today we're just going to talk about the blocking of the river. I was under the understanding that they were blocking the river year-round. And I was concerned not only for sedimental issues, how sediment is carried down from the relationships that the skies have with our mountains and our mountain seasonal flux in temperature changes and how they act as sponges and aquifers and they weep and they provide mineral sediment supplies from the highest points in nature, all these little pockets into valleys, the valleys themselves all the way down to the oceans. This is how the oceans, the mountains and the rivers and the skies all breathe together in a cycle. And the rivers are the channels for the sediment and the mineral from the high mountains and glaciers all the way down to the oceans. It's so spectacular and beautiful and you can see it when you realize it, when you study it, when you go out to meet it, and you can feel it. So, and that is the reason I'm here today to tell you a good story that they removed the fences. They're only in there for short periods of time because the bullfish, the men, show up, if I've got this right, the bullfish show up before the women. So they show up and they go higher up the streams and the women show up and the bullfish are all higher up the stream. So they put the fence in to corral them, to get them to mingle, to get them uh, in proximity to each other. And then once the bulk of the fish are in, they do remove the fences and the salmon, the uh, spawning channels that have been built are full and they produce a higher percentage of uh, birth rate than the actual river itself, so that's good. But then the potential of the species still has that room to move upstream and up the river, supply grizzlies, other, other forms of life with food and um, different biodiversity to the higher mountains as well. So, so they've got a pretty good system working and they work with it consciously every season. They're not just doing it on a clock. They're observing uh, as a very acute and aware team of people and working as best that they can all with their hearts where my, place, where my heart is in place with the salmon in its best interest for our future as symbiotic, symbiosis species keystone species living together upon a planet. We have to become a keystone species again, and that's what this is about. That's what this video is about. So through our intelligence, our ability to be empathetic and intuitive beings with other beings, and to be in re right relationship with the higher purpose of life together and cycles of life together. So we have to treat everything sensitively and well. We are very, very sensitive beings, sentient creatures that live in symbiosis connection with other beings. So we're meant to feel, we're meant to be sensitive. We're not meant to be in these old paradigms and these tough guy issues and stuff. Yes, we have testosterone. Yes, we relate with women. Yes, there's that interaction, that's all natural. But we're not meant to be mentally stuck in that frame of mind and that set of energy and in um, yeah it's it's, it's that, that's not who we are as human beings it truly isn't at our essence 
and in our purity and how we're meant, or how I believe we're meant to live naturally upon this planet in harmony with the planet, in its truest understanding and humility. We are truly sensitive beings. And what I wanna tell you about that is it's the ultimate superpower. It is. The only reason you don't realize it at first is because when you're stuck in that uh, tough man mentality or that state and, and interacting with that, uh, those environments of the, of the world is you feel like you're losing something at first. When you start to become empathetic and start to, you feel weak, right? Everyone think you, you, because of your set of mind, right? But it's actually power. It's actually strength. When you can hear how other people feel and when you can talk sensibly about it and you can have humility about yourself, it is the most powerful opening you'll ever experience as a consciousness. And it just keeps going the more you allow it to happen. So it truly is a divine power. It truly is a light that exists, an oscillation, a frequency that exists within the alignment of our body, our heart, and our mind that you can access and live in the magic of with all beings. And it's not perfect because we have to realize it and just be there focus upon it until until we can just be there or just be there so it's a practice of awareness but it truly is the human being that we are learning to become so the story is very very good and i'll just say it again the the relationship the skies have with the mountains is very special and every channel of water that comes down from the mountains is very special because of that relationship. And that relationship that the sky and mountains are in is intimate throughout the seasonal flux, throughout temperature changes. And what the mountains act as, as is they act as sponges, they act as types of aquifers of all different kinds and types, shapes and flows, and they weep. And that is the mineral concentration that moves down through every little pocket, even little tiny little pockets up near the glaciers to smaller and bigger valleys, all the way to the ocean. It's what carries the sediment and the life force. And like I say, when our rainbow vision is on, when we see the life force of all things, when we see the energy within all things, you can see it and you can feel it. And that's why I'm here today is because it's the most spectacular feeling. There's no better place to be if you're in tune with that feeling. So sensitivity men, sensitivity women. I've got sensitive skin, you know, like, you know, like um, I go out and work with the rednecks in the bush and they're all that tough guy mode and that tough guy energy, it's hilarious. And um, they make it fun of each other for the funniest things. And it's fine, it is what it is, but, but, we don't know what's on the other side of being a real human being. And that's what my point is, is just being okay with being sensitive. It's not a weakness, you know? The, the, most, the most enjoyable experiences I can have in my life are being in the water and sunbathing. I'm sharing personal things with you. And you know why? Because I have sensitive skin, because I have a bit of that red hair in me, that lower pigment in my skin, right? So I have that, and I tan great, but I have that sensitive skin. And so, because I am willing to pay attention to my sensitivity consciously, I can enjoy, enjoy feminine aspects of myself, still a very vital male in, in my intimacy and sexuality, but I can still enjoy feminine aspects of myself comfortably, this is the point, because I'm willing to experience my sensitivities. So I end up loving sunbathing. I end up loving soaking in, in the cleanest waters I can find because I'm able to tune into the sensitive aspects of one of the most sensitive parts of my being and enjoy the nourishment. 
And so sensitivity is a superpower. And let me tell you, when you can be empathetic and be completely clear of yourself and open your heart and being and listen to another being on an empathetic level, that is, it, it's your aura is the skin at that point and you can feel each other emotionally and I hope you're getting that from me remotely. So it is very amazing what happens when we open ourselves up to being sensitive. All right, especially my, my brothers out there, <laughs> especially summertime, because that's when, when everything raw comes out, right? When, it, when all the turmoil comes out, when all the frustration comes out is in the heat and when, and when our bodies are active and when our energy is rising, right? So don't be afraid to turn to your sensitive side and start doing interpersonal work with yourself and others and um, interpersonal work with yourself and others and ask yourself questions and listen to your heart, listen to your body. Listen to those cells, those, those vibrating cells and what's going on in there. So, it's so beautiful for, for you to um, be here with me today. I'm just excited today and expressing from my heart and my highest love. I'm feeling the magic of creation. And the lesson I have learned today is that always just be present in the moment. I came here with a mission today and I'm not in any frame of, um, of self, uh, self guilt or anything like that, but I am in a humility of thoughts that were going through my mind of how I thought my day was going to go. And this day has been incredible. My entire community, the parks of Canada, I have just been astonished and surprised by every human being and humbled and blessed with uh, the most incredible conversations um, about this keystone species, about the salmon that we all feel connected to at our ancestral roots and love and wanna see changes for. And that'll be my last topic on this video today was the, was the damming. You know, I came up here just for a little fishery project with a fence blocking a river at a very short period of time for corralling salmon thinking it was up all year and it wasn't. Um, so I had the conversation of dams in mind. So if you're not aware, at this time in history, we are very aware of all the problem that major dams cause. And I want to also ask everyone, even the people working in the damming industries at the most professional level and, and uh, knowing the history, knowing the construction, everything, from my perspective, on an environmental level, knowing the species and knowing the functions of nature, we could have done them differently. They were done kind of in an industrial mindset, no, no, um, no conflict, it is what it is, and we're learning and growing, but they were done more in a mindset of how to get the energy, but not with both how to get the energy and how to let the function of nature, nature flow as well. It was just, get the energy and as much of it as you can. And I think that's the truth. So the hard hitting arrow of truth, right? The arrow of truth, you shoot an arrow at a deer, it kills it. There's no turning back, you gave death. That's a responsibility. Now you have to work with what you've been given, right? So that's the arrow of truth, it's real. Take it seriously when you hear that comment. So. The arrow of truth, those dams weren't built considering what we would have considered today, knowing what we know today as a collective. We probably would have thought about the cycles I'm talking about with the sky, the mountains, the mountains weeping with the seasonal changes in temperatures, the sediment deposits from the, from the glaciers to the ocean, and, that's, and the cycle from the ocean to sky, the mountains and rivers, and it's... And it's um, symbiosis so we probably would do it differently today and I think that's the truth that's the arrow I'm talking about so 
Last thing I want to talk about, and I've said this in videos before throughout this winter of 2022-2023, when I was um, in the Columbia Valley, talk, uh, closer to the Mica Dam in this area of British Columbia, Canada, where I am in this dimension on our remote connection here is Turtle Island. So when I was over there, I talked about this before. Now, becoming very sensible people that can commune and communicate and make decisions together as smaller communities and larger communities and global communities in healthy ways where we listen to the smallest community where the area is that we're talking about because they know the best. And they are also considering their relationships outside those communities. This would be a global topic that we would all have to have the highest sensitivity and responsibility for each other's communities and surroundings. And it would have to be done in a manner that respected all life and respected all well-being, not a rush and push forward where everything, where many people are left behind and it's just an elitist trying to get it done. But the dream that's coming alive is not only to live in the highest respect of one another, in our spiritual level of evolution as human beings, but to exist in right relationship with our planet's consciousness and its creations and all of their life in our sacred hoop of well-being. Just like the mountains to the sky to ocean, that sacred hoop is the same with every creature and how they support each other in its life force, and we are one of them. So, we have to slow down and become much more responsible and have um, much less immaturities, uh, to put it very simply, between us, but we won't go into that today. So that's, we can do politics another time. This is a beautiful day. Okay, so we can, with our, with our growing technologies especially, and even with our current technologies, we can start to implement the process of making every home, every temple, every structure that we wish to keep and proceed with self-sufficient in its own energy sources without disrupting any of the major energy sources um, natural energy flows and sources and abundance of life that creation is upholding on its own in <laughs> the forces of whatever you want to call it God, universe, eternal holding, upholding on its own and supplying the great creation of all the life we see around us that we, that we are simply a part of and that includes us we're not creating it is what I'm getting at. We're the co-creators, but there is something that is supporting us as well. And we should have humility and respect it and live in right relationship with it. So if we can eventually, and this is speaking from the heart, of all migrational marine life, Not just the rivers, the migrations in the ocean itself as well, the whales, the dolphins, the turtles, the everything, the deep sea creatures, all of it. They all have migrations in currents, in different environments within the sea different temperatures within the waters, just like the temperatures within the mountains. It's all very connected. The fish are the keystone. They are the key 
Language has no coincidences is how metaphysical teachers teach it. It's all energy and language is a part of that. It's all vibration. Language has no coincidence. Keystone species. They are the key. Right? So as we move for, forward in our technological movement, as we move forward in our advancements of energy, we can do this. We can release the dams. We can set the rivers free. Amama, Uanoa, Aho, Wonkantonka. So we sent that prayer off to Great Mystery with freedom, its own will. That prayer has its own will. And it's off to take root and fruition at this time we are experiencing collectively upon our planet. So that's it. I hope the sound was great. I hope it all comes through clear that you can hear me well. This is Bodhisattva YouTube, the golden emperor of a golden age, our collective focus within our alignment as real human beings globally around our planet. We're doing it. We're gonna find free energy in ways we maybe once did on this planet in ways we can't imagine. We're gonna keep producing better energy sources and we are going to right our relationship with all the species on this planet. We are going to live in a golden age of paradise upon this planet. And we already are. And that's what I discovered today in my humility from my brothers and sisters all around me in my endeavors to bring this message to you. It's a good story. I hope you enjoyed. And I look forward to seeing you again. My name is Orca Chief. I'm carrying the name Orca Chief to speak my highest joy of the connection that is continuing to awaken and expand within me from the roots of my source within creation. Hey, aloha. All our relations, thank you. May this remote healing reach you. And can you please share to support. When we share our love, it grows. And this is my love. And like and subscribe if you wish to. It does support my movement on the planet and my endeavors and intentions that I continue. Okay, lots of love.